Hi, I'm Vera. And I'm Christian from LR Time. And this video will be about our slide out drawer, our angle fridge, and our gold zero. Hope you like that. Enjoy the video. Enjoy the video. So, <laughs> you want to show something today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what we want to show you guys today is our slide out drawer and how we use it. Okay? Because we got a lot of questions about this and we think it's about time. It's a full slide out. So we can move this all the way out. And the reason we wanted a full slide out and not only a fridge slide out is because on the Discovery we got this little ledge. And because this is a daily driver, when you put the hatch down, it is it is kind of it's a nice thing because you can sit on and you got a little roof above it and you can stand on it when you work on the roof tent. So this is all great. But when you actually load the car and you use it as a daily driver and you go grocery shopping and so on. Especially me. Is, especially you. <laughs> yeah, see see how <laughs> see how high this thing is? So, so when you want to load water bottles in there, it is it is yeah. just in the way on a regular it's day. It's perfect, you know. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to lift a water. You yes. Know, like a so that's why we built a full slide out drawer and not just a fridge slide out like you guys have in the U.S. many times in your Jeeps. And uh, this this is this is the reason. So on a day to day business, it makes that compartment in here because it's so deep back in there it makes it much more usable yeah. for Vera but now you got to tell about we took all that chunk here out excuse yeah. me this will be item number 35 then okay okay <laughs> so here so Christian tries to film yeah. in one take and I mess it up all the time <laughs> the slide out drawer is really a very simple construction it consists of four rails mounted around a plastic board and two additional rails mounted to the Discovery. And in between there are heavy-duty full slide-out rails from Amazon. The whole thing is bolted together. It bolts right into the existing M8 holes in the Discovery used typically as tie-down points. The assembly is very heavy because of the plastic material board in future, I would use a lighter material, some sort of a laminated wood, also waterproof, instead of this very expensive and heavy material. The system is permanently installed in our Discovery. So, full slide out. So, yeah. these are Amazon rails here. They are heavy duty. We're going to link them in the description. Yeah. But we're not going to go into the full construction of this thing, what the dimensions are and how it's done. Well, we're going to do a few dimensions. I got my scale with me. <laughs> so first of all, from the size, the goal was to get our fridge and two of these boxes next to each other. This is... Man, it's cold here. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> There's also a little gap here in between, which is really, really nice. That's where our camping table goes. When this is closed, it actually slides in here over the two boxes. We got, got our camping table. And the ladder. And the ladder, yeah. We got a ladder in there. This is where I can take the ISO box down. Euro box. The Euro, what? Euro box. Okay, the Euro. You, you know, those are the standard Euro size box Euro boxes. Okay, then the way it is constructed, it got a plastic 10 millimeter or 12 millimeter plastic board which is extremely heavy. The nice thing is it is very straight and very, very rugged. And then we got these aluminum rails around it and they are the same rails here as we have on the inside. Okay, the aluminum angle rails here. Mm -hmm. okay, oh, they the, are angle rails. Yeah, they yeah. are angle rails. They're smaller ones here. And they are five millimeter thick. And this is really what you need. You need a beefy, um, angle iron here yeah because if you make this too flimsy the rails will not carry the weight the rails actually need a good solid structure to be bolted to so if you just make that out of flimsy framing it won't work yeah so this way now it's a I think 200 kg so I can easily sit on here and it will still it will still slide me in and out very easy yeah I can do that whole day it's just a very, very rugged slide out. 
and the rails are about I think 190 euros on oh, Amazon. That's expensive, yeah. So important thing was to get the fridge here to have this is wide enough and the other criteria we wanted to have is to have it as close enough over over this rear hatch here. The hatch is actually not level. Okay? No? It's oh. not entirely level. So if you would put this thing in straight, a hundred percent straight, it would rub here. See how close it comes here? It would rub here. So the slide out drawer is actually installed in a small angle. Over the full length it's probably like half an inch in an angle. Which means if the car is absolutely level it tends to slide in, especially when it's heavily loaded. But that was the only reason to keep this gap small and to keep this gap small. Okay. But that only happens when we park yeah, on an incline. Well, it's anyway not a yeah. problem. But the thing yeah. is, if you would build it all the way straight, you do it again. Because then you're rubbing here or you have a huge gap here. And, and did trust we... me, building it again, I have experience. <laughs> I just want... Okay. Did we build it so again? I actually, <laughs> yeah, I got two hole patterns in there. And I can mount the rails in two different heights. <laughs> I think the Discovery has just an unbeatable trunk. Look at the size of this platform now. It's more than a meter long between my rails. 106 centimeters, okay? Yeah. Sorry for you inch guys. And then in the width between rail and rail, I got more than a meter. I got a meter oh five. Yeah. This is incredible. Yeah, but this you... is a huge platform for cargo. Yeah, but you yeah. don't have the full height in the back because uh, the back seats yeah, are tilted. Yeah, because of the back seats. No? But that's where our go... toolbox is. It's yeah. <laughs> our red toolbox. So, and I got to say, I'm going to make a video at one point on exactly how to build this thing with all dimensions where I'm going to upload all the drawings, exactly the whole pattern you got to drill. This way everybody can copy it. But this is not the topic of this video, okay? And yeah. I want to have more subscribers before I do that. <laughs> Okay, and uh, I want to know who that one guy is who gives us a thumbs down, okay, every time on every video. <laughs> the videos... I'm sure it's always the same guy. <laughs> yeah. So we got two boards in here. The Discovery has obviously a nice edge here where you can put something straight on and it gives you a second platform yeah. to put all your cargo in. But, oops, <gasps> we got a steel frame in here where I have... Um, two bars removed right here in order to have better fuel when we use it as a daily driver. When we are on vacation, we got two steel bars in here. So we have a real separation for this compartment. And then when I measure here into this edge, it's again 90 centimeters we got here in depth. Yeah. So this is huge. This is 150, yeah. 145. But, but we have to say that is a five-seater. I don't know if you have yeah, that latch with a seven-seater. Yeah, you know? I don't know how this all looks on a yeah. seven-seater. We've never seen a so seven-seater This is a really, really huge compartment here. And you can see right now the car is in off-road height. So this is hard to get to. It's really high, but... Because we are kind of off-road. Look at that. Kind of we touch dirt. Okay, are we losing focus again? <laughs> We got two pieces of wood in here to give that a nice shelf and to separate this compartment from this compartment. We think this is a great touch on the Discovery and really, really cheap to do. Yeah. And on one of the two pieces we got in here, this is actually a bench I made. Okay. Yeah. And so this is a real tiny little bench. We use that as a table or as something to sit on. And um, it fits. it fits perfectly in there. So... This was not very difficult to build, just a little bit of welding and fabricating and a little bit of woodwork. But on a Saturday it was done. And this way we have something to cook. Yeah. And it is as a second purpose as a yeah, as a shelf in there. So this is for yeah. most mainly used for cooking. When right? we set up camp, that table goes out. Yeah. You know, and um I cook on so it. So this would be worthwhile another video we can yeah. make here, how to make mm. this. So there is a second one in here. We leave is, that in. You know, it would have enough room to make it also a bench, but I was too lazy. Here you come over here, use this as a pointer. I mean, first of all, we got, this is the steel frame here, what we use to separate our cargo space. 
it is bolted down here. The nice thing is that the Discovery has so many fastening points where you can bolt stuff down. Yeah. So we took all this styrofoam crap out here, what um, usually holds the jack and a bunch of other useless stuff and the uh, hitch. So we took this styrofoam out and it gives you this huge compartment. Yeah. This is our food storage compartment when we are going overlanding, okay? It is really deep. If you yeah. think about this, this is 12 centimeters deep. Yeah. And it inclines to like 10 centimeters back there. So you got like, man, this is a lot of storage. This holds food for one week for four people. Yeah. Easily. Wow. And you still have access to the um, spare tire. Yeah, that is important. Winch. There is an even bigger storage area in front of those two wood boards below the seats. I have to go to the other side and... Okay, you can gain access when you fold the seats down and what I find so great on the Discovery about this area is that it is really really hard to get to for other people so the way to put the seats, the, the lower seat sections up, you need to be a Discovery owner to know how to do that when you hide that strap. Psst. Yeah, I show you. No. Well, it's only gonna be fueled by discovery owners, and they're not gonna, <laughs> they're not gonna steal our stuff. Okay. So here, this is yeah. Put this. It's my mess. Okay. So here, fold that lower seat up. See, you pull that little strap, and there oh, is, and there is storage down here under each seat, a lot of storage. And when you fold this seat flat here, yeah. here fold this one forward, oh, you I get, you, it's not yeah. possible right now. You can get to all that storage back there, and you can also reach in from here um, to get stuff out. So this is really incredible. You don't have to spend a dime. Yeah. to get all that storage oh, really? here. But yeah. what I wanted to show you is the real insider trick. If you put your laptop, listen, yeah. <laughs> if you put your laptop down in there, into this compartment, and you hide this strap, you yeah. hide this away like this, okay? Yeah, but now you, you would have to reach again. in here with long, with long fingers, slide this up, get the strap, and this would even allow you then to open up that compartment. If that, if that is gone, there is no chance to open this up. So this is really a secure place in a Discovery and you have that on both seats. I bet you you didn't even know that, right? If oh, I, of course I knew that. <laughs> I bet you if I would if I would put your stuff down there, you wouldn't get it back out. The thing is, you know, Christian is always hopelessly, well, he hopelessly loses his stuff in the car, and I have to find it. I don't lose it hopelessly. You lose I it just hopelessly. have it short-term misplaced, <laughs> okay? Let's get back in here and, and explain how great this is. Then you got these useless nets here in the Discovery. It's called a net. Yeah, net. Net. A useless net, yeah. yeah. It is okay. There are these cubby compartments here, um, which I find completely useless too. Yes, but that's yeah. where... But there is a big trick on those. Nobody knows, not even really? James. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you take the lid off. If you take the lid off these, they become usable. Okay? Why do you want to have a lid which closes when you want to open it? It drives you nuts. And everybody thinks this is so great. It's great if you got seats back here. Yeah. But um, when we are just using it as a daily driver, I put them back on. Okay. I don't want to lose them. This lid is hard to get off. Okay. So you have to do that before you leave. And then this becomes usable. So here is now how the technology of the slide out drawer works. Okay? <laughs> we get to the technology point. Okay. We are running a fridge. And we run it off a gold zero four hundred. Okay, this is not the lithium one. This is the cheap one, and this is the cheapest angle fridge you can buy. Okay, it doesn't even have an interior light. It has nothing. It just has this little dial here, and that's it. Yeah, and we. But it is big, and it's very very quiet, and it has a small inrush current. And look at the size of this thing. This is a small fridge for. It's 400. a thirty-five liter. Oh, you got some leftovers in there from last oh, vacation. Great. Okay. <laughs> Are you hungry now? Yeah. Okay. So this is a relatively big fridge for less than four hundred euros. You get it when it's on sale from Engel. Come close. You hardly hear. You hardly don't hear this thing running. Okay. It is very very quiet, and it doesn't have a rotary compressor. 
this makes the difference between the Engel fridge and this other brand I hate. What's Domatic. Called? Domatic. Okay, <laughs> you don't I hate, hate it. I hate Domatic. Really? I really hate it. I know they are the market leader and the biggest one, but I'm just the Engel fridge fan, okay? I'm like a big fan of their technology. We're going to cut all this up. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't yeah. have a rotary compressor. It has that oscillating compressor. I find it quieter and I ha it has a smaller inrush current. This is the big technical advantage of that fridge. When you run a fridge of a small gold zero like this one, the inrush current can drop the circuit breaker. You see what the uh, current draw is now? Can you go here? The fridge runs and it takes 33 watts. Yeah. We run the fridge on the 12 volt outlet because on the 230 volt outlet here, the angle fridge will actually draw something like 45. So you have 10 watts more running it on the 230. The advantage is on 230, it will never trip the circuit breaker. So one advice from me is if you got food in there, which would get destroyed like meat when you run out of power and when your fridge cuts out, you're going to have to run it at 230 in the beginning. And then you don't have this problem, but you will have a higher energy consumption. And as the gold zero ages, this phenomenon again goes away. Charging the gold zero here, <clears throat> and this is where our cable suspension comes in, what we have here to run the cables in and out comfortably when we pull the slide out drawer out, is we run it on 230. We, we charge actually the gold zero on 230. So there's the power supply for it right here. And from that power supply, it runs the cables all the way over here. And there is then an AC converter under the seats. We got this cable suspension here, which is just three hinges and two aluminum rails and they bolt it in in a smart way. And you can see how they support the cables going to our slide out drawer. There's something stuck here. Yeah. The air hose. This supports our cables to the slide out drawer. You can see how this works. It folds all the way flat here in the front. It's really it's made in such a way that, that we have the maximum space. I figured out every dimension by half an inch. See, when I close this, there's absolutely no gap here. And then I got this little latch here, what I can put in, and that keeps the slide out drawer out. If this thing is loaded here with, you know, um, 100 kg of gear, and you park the car on an angle and you open this little latch, you gotta be careful because it will slide out with a lot of power and there's no dampening in there. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. You cold? Oh, yeah, it's so really cold. cold. It's like minus four. I know it doesn't look like it. Another reason why the angle fridge is so great is, I mean, first of all, Vera finds hidden food in there after <laughs> putting it in after the winter time. I, it just fits from the size perfect when you look at this, especially with our with this um, second storage layer here with our little bench on top, it just fits perfect. It gets you the maximum storage space in the trunk, in my opinion, you can get in a Discovery. So these are good for storage if you keep them on the inside, but they're not weatherproof. Yeah. Okay, they're not weatherproof. We're going to have to build something and there will be a video soon where we build something in particular here for the kitchen stuff. Yeah but um, it will be a little bit more time before we do that. So I put my, my bench back together. Look, it's frozen off. It's so cold. It's so it's cold. Frozen to the and steel. This is constructed in the same way the benches are on the Oktoberfest. Okay, yeah, or is, any other. Happy from the Oktoberfest benches. And it's heavy because I use steel. You know, my welding skills. <laughs> We use here aluminum. You know, someone like Dirt Lifestyle Nate would make that out of aluminum. Yeah. But I was uh, unable to do that. And we so were this in goes in here. Yeah. Yeah. And it gets us the storage space back and we would just throw our stuff out of the tent now in there and be ready to go. So I think this setup, honestly, for an SUV with this little money put in is unbeatable. We got our sticker on here now, yeah. and we got one here up front too. Yeah. 
Ta-da! <laughs> okay. I have a down jacket and I'm freezing here for half an hour. <laughs> yeah, that was stupid. Yeah, there's frost on the ground here. Here, see you guys? There's frost on the ground. It's cold. It's cold and it was cold for that entire video. Let me talk about this location here we are. This is the old Odenwald Limes here in Germany. This is a Roman border which split Germany in half um, 2000 years ago, built by the Romans. And these are the old watchtower uh, foundations. There are two of these here. And the Odenwald Limes was constructed out of palisades. You can see this here. And it was usually cleared, all the woods were gone. And then they had these watchtowers in a certain distance. Um, so that they can transport messages. 2,000 years ago, I find that really, really incredible. Similar to the Hadrian's Wall in the UK. Uh, so are we done? They even built up a, a little section back there um, of the Palisade Wall. See it all the way mm -hmm. back there. You, you're all relaxed? Yes, I'm all relaxed. Okay. <laughs> So this was our short video about our slide out drawer. All I can say is I recommend building a one platform slide out drawer and not a drawer system. This is our preference because it gets you the maximum yep. flexibility and storage space. Yep. So hopefully you found that interesting. And if you do, think about subscribing. And in any case, if you subscribe, don't unsubscribe. And we'll see you guys next week. See you next week. Thanks for watching.